We got the comic Butch in the house, and we have a bunch of dollar bin books that be spiking this week. Reggie Collect's going to be joining us, too. The gang is all here. So many comic books spiking that we make a video about it every single week, and we're going to tell you the reason why. Hit the subscribe button and start them off. Our Overstreet Price Guide Advisor, Milky Comics, at number 10. That's right, number 10 on the list with a big spoiler warning. If you are not watching Moon Knight, come on, guys, what are you doing? Number 10 on the list, Secret Avengers number 19. This is the debut of the Moon Knight costume that looks like the white business suit. $35 average sales, $250 for a CGC 9.8. We're seeing an increase of 367% this week after episode two debuted. And we knew based off of leaks and promo images that we were going to see the business suit. But to what extent will we see the persona of Mr. Knight take place? And after episode two, it's very clear the direction they're taking us. This is a persona of Stephen Grant when he goes full Moon Knight, unlike Mark Spector, who goes kind of the OG Moon Knight route from the Bronze Age. I like how they're doing this, Tom. So right now it looks like we have Mark Spector gets to be the classic Moon Knight and we have Stephen Grant gets to be the Mr. Knight persona. Now, while he shows up in a white suit in this outfit, keep in mind that he's not actually referred to as Mr. Knight until the 2014 run, number one of the Warren Ellis Moon Knight. Indeed, it would take upwards of two years before they would take this character design and give Stephen Grant the Mr. Knight Moon Knight persona at the list. At number nine, we have Batman Beyond the White Knight, the thank you variant. We warned you that this may happen, and this book is spiking quick after last week. $200 average sales, $360 for a raw high sale of this shop thank you variant. Now keep in mind that not all shops, including yours truly, have received their thank you variant, so we may very well see a flood of these in the next couple weeks as Lunar delivers them to the respective shops. It really appears that there is a lack of inventory in the marketplace. There's very few of these even listed on eBay. At the time of this recording, there was like under 10 of them at auction, all selling for a premium. We warned the community last week that Sean Gordon Murphy, the writer of this comic book, had gone to Instagram to warn the community about printing issues. Now, whether or not that actually took place, that's yet to be seen. There for sure are delivery issues for cover A and this thank you variant as Russ has expressed in this video. This issue also features the first appearance of a Deathstroke protege, a female Robin for the first time spiking cover A last week. But tread lightly on this because whenever there's distribution problems, typically when those comics end up making it on the marketplace, they come in waves, making it a better time to grab if you're interested in buying. And this is a perfect example why people need to be utilizing Key Collector because there have been warnings and explanations about the print runs and what's going on with this book that I think has helped people make the correct decision. The FOMO is real with a book like this. I mean, even I'm looking at the numbers going, am I missing something? Should I be purchasing this? But these warnings clearly are saving individuals money because the idea is this may drop in price after more hit the internet. Key Collector is a very affordable app. And if you use code TOM101, you unlock a free two-week subscription, support the show, get access to a vast amount of comic book resources, catalog your comics, get suggested pricing, and so much more. And save on money as it pertains to that FOMO bug because it'll get you and it bites hard. Number eight on the list, The Vision and Scarlet Witch number 12. $40 average sales, $250 for a CGC 9.8. This is the issue where Scarlet gives birth to her two twins, which end up becoming Wiccan and Speed. Now, we know we got to see them in WandaVision, but we weren't certain until the new trailer dropped that we'll be seeing the boys again. We got a double-sized climax on our hands. We have an increase of copies sold of 900% this week after the trailer dropped. And shout out Zombify Doctor Strange. I'm surprised that Marvel Zombies isn't spiking for like the upteenth time again. I love Sam Raimi in Army of Darkness and I think this is going to be a perfect movie for him to show a little bit of horror, a little bit of comedy and how much he loves the Marvel Universe and these characters. This book being on the list may surprise some members, but let's actually focus on what just happened. For over a year and a half we had no idea if these are characters that are going to be mainstays in the MCU. Being in trailer 
cannot be understated. This right here shows that there's a high likelihood of narratives continuing with both of these boys or not. We don't know. It's all about that speculation. Hit the like and slap the subscribe. You know, we're going to be here if the market moves in this direction. We're going to tell you about it. Number seven on the list, Amazing Spider-Man number 90. Three. This is a new book last week and is going for $10 average sales. If you've been paying attention to the parallel storyline, the Beyond storyline, you knew that Ben Riley's memories have been erased and we finally see all of this storyline come to fruition. Ben Riley's a clone. The memories he has, which aren't even his, they're Peter's, are what gives him his moral compass as Spider-Man. And without that, he is driving himself mad. He's going crazy. And to no surprise, spoiler warning, by the way, but we got to tell you why this book's on the list. He gets into a fight with Spider-Man. And by the end of the battle, Peter's trying to save him, but he's given up. He's ready to die. And an explosion takes place and you think he's dead. However, he is rebirthed Joker style as a madman Spider-Man. We have the first appearance of Chasm. Now, I want to add very carefully that we do have a lot of amazing Spider-Man readers at my shop, and not a lot of them have been digging this storyline. So whether we see Chasm again in the very near future is yet to be seen. Make your decision carefully when buying this book, folks. I'll say one thing. If the narrative isn't something that you're super hyped about, you're going to enjoy Patrick Gleason drawing Spider-Man oh, yeah. for sure. I'm so happy he is drawing our web slinger. He brings a style, a crispness and detail that gets me excited every issue, regardless of the twists and turns they're taking us on. Next at the list, at number six, one of my favorite comic books of all time from 1989, the first print, James O bar goodness we have the crow number one this is a tough book in high grade this is an independent book that had really low paper quality and that's one of the reasons why we are seeing average high sales of 1.2 thousand dollars and the three sales we're reporting on one from february thirty five hundred dollars and two from march $3,000 are only 9.6s. Getting a 9.8 on this Crow number one is very difficult. The last time a 9.8 standard copy sold was in June 2021. It went for $9,600. And I think that was a good deal. And this was during the boom in comic collecting. This was at the heart of it. TMNT was at an all time high, still is, by the way. We were seeing Usagi Ojimbo keys going for astronomical numbers. Thundercats, Transformers, 80s tunes. G.I. Joe, we're seeing records being broken week by week. This independent title was getting the same type of treatment. And I think that $9,600 sale was a great deal because we saw in January of this year, a 9.8 signed copy sell for $18,000. Hot damn. Now, when you're looking at graded multipliers, a lot of times a signature will add money to it, and it's tough to quantify how much that is. This is an eight thousand dollar increase with a j-o bar signature he's still alive he's a fairly good signer and a lot of this has to do with the fact that if you barely touch this book your fingerprints will get all over it a 98 will not stay a 98 if you handle it so it's an impressive price and i really think if any more out there come at nine eights we're going to see an even higher price an increase of 500 percent this week for a very pricey comic book after news broke on april 1st it was actually pretty funny because I posted about this on my Instagram, Comic Tom 101, and Boss Logic responded saying, I'm going to wait till April 2nd. You know, like too soon to celebrate, right? But it hit Key Collector. It was vetted. It's happening. We have Pennywise actor Bill Skarsgård to portray. He's slated Eric Draven the Crow. Now, if you're looking for scarce indie books, you can also look for The Crow's First appearance on the back of a comic book, which is Dead World number 10. There is a regular cover and a gory cover for that one. That was released in November 1988. There's also Caliber Presents number one, which is the first time the crow is in a story. There's like four or six pages of a crow story, and that was produced in January 1989, a full month before crow issue number one. Happy hunting. Crow number one gets that second 
full appearance. Comment down below. Let me know what you think about Pennywise portraying Eric Draven in the next Crow remake. It'll enter you to win this Omni-Man Invincible number one Tyler Kirkham variant. I think it's crazy enough to work. You know what else is just crazy enough to work, Tom? Number five on the list, Spider-Punk number one. We are seeing a $50 average sales for the one in 50 Takashi Okazaki variant. Spider-Punk, the anarchic Spider-Man. We have Hobby Brown in a world that clearly the creators know their punk rock. Oh man, I'm so excited about this. Like this... This is a big thing. Like, so, like I, I knew that we were going to do a little bit of a misfit shout out today because we have a character showing up. But I just found out, like I'm reading this and realize we are on Earth 138. And if you are a Misfits fan, you know they have a song called We Are 138. Like this is already a tie in to classic punk rock history. Man, my hat is off to you guys doing a great job with this so far. But we also have a bunch of variants that we got to discuss and a reveal at the end of this book. So spoiler warnings again. This video is filled with a bunch of spoilers, but the comics are out. You know, keep up on your pull list. Cover A is available and it's selling for, you know, cover price. But we do have a variant covered by Maria Wolf and a 1 in 25 Mike Del Mundo variant that's selling for above ratio. And we have a world that is a different reality. And whenever that happens, we get different renditions of characters like Captain Anarchy. So I think this version of Earth is awesome. And it's great because every time we get another Earth in the Marvel Universe, we end up having more alternate characters, including a character that is featured in this book called Captain Anarchy. Now, if you want to look all the way back to Spider-Verse 2 in 2015, we see the first appearance of Captain Anarchy, but we also get to see the first cover appearance of Spider-Punk, who we find out is Hobby Brown, originally the Prowler in the mainstream Marvel Universe. Captain Anarchy, a alternate version of Captain America. We see a alternate version of Kraven, and by the end of this issue, we would see a misfitified, a danzified Taskmaster. I love this. This is so awesome because you have the new Taskmaster coming in. He's totally got his devil lock. I mean, 100% Jerry only right there. And the first thing he says, if you want to scream, scream with me. It's the first line of hybrid moments. I mean, really, this is one of those things that if you're a Misfits fan, this is a deep cut. But oh my God, I'm freaking out about it right now. Good job, guys. Yeah, yeah. I want to see some Joey Ramone, like Ramone. Moan shout out soon. I expect it. We <laughs> really appreciate these deep cuts. And next at the list, at number four, we have another single appearance of a book that no one was spacking on that could be hunted for in dollar bins that has a very low graded census count. We have Silver Surfer, issue number eight from 1988. $6 average sales, and I think somebody got a steal on this. $93 for a CGC 9.8. This is the first appearance of Papton, a Cree scientist. 2,350% increase in copies sold. And keep in mind, there are only 36 of them on the census, and only 33 of them graded at a CGC 9.8. I don't think we've seen the end of this book. Rumors started circulating this week from leaks that Colin Stonely is set to portray the Kree scientist who only appears one time in comic books, and it's in this issue. And this is a Silver Surfer-focused book. He's planning a getaway from the Kree who have tried to abduct him to do experiments on him. And because all they have is his surfboard, the experiments are focused on that. And this scientist fails to learn anything from it and that's it. It's a focused story on Silver Surfer. Could this mean there is some type of Silver Surfer foundation being built? Maybe. Or is it more likely that Marvel's doing more of what they've done in the past and what we've believed they're still doing? Picking random characters from Marvel lore that don't really have a backstory so that they can kind of pay tribute to the comics, but do a fresh take on a character. So the casting information for this character 
absolutely fits. And this is one of those things that we're not going to see the Marvels until February of next year. So we've still got 10 months to figure out what's going on with this or potentially other characters. Just more proof that the hunt never stops. I mean, we have books that over this last year have spiked for no other reason besides supposed casting calls and characters that are just random that looks like they may be utilized in the MCU to some capacity. Take a look at Moon Knight number two, Arthur Harrow's first appearance. And seemingly after episode two, Ethan Hawke's villainous character is really akin to this character from the comics by name only. But this is a key that just hit $250 at the end of March, a once $5 at best book. Another great example, Incredible Hulk number 156, the first appearance of Krylar, a subservient scientist after Bill Murray rumors happened this book has consistently been on the list with a recent sale 8.0 for $185 I've been keeping up on the spec really closely I'm a big Bill Murray fan the man who knew too little and he was recently on a podcast over the last couple weeks and he was asked aren't you in like a superhero movie coming out Ant-Man Quantum Mania and Bill Murray said yes and that he's going to be portraying a villain they asked him do you have any superpowers? And his only response was, my power is I'm a bad guy. Now that's just Bill Murray being Bill Murray, but this is a very wide net to cast. There's lots of bad guys in the Marvel universe. So tread lightly, but that's why these books are fun because there's a really low entry level. And if you miss out, you're probably not spending a ton of money. Sounds like some low risk, potential high reward. Sounds good to me at the list at number three. Miles Morales, Spider-Man number 13 from 2019. Coming full circle spec that started then and is looking like it's paying off now. We have the first appearance of Billy Morales and an increase of copies sold of 206% this week. But I want to remind the community that this book or a variant of this book has made our list more than twice in the last two months. $50 average sales, $205 for a CGC 9.8. We know that the next Miles Morales story arc is called Lost in the Spider-Verse. And this is why you need to pay attention to the solicitations because her name is all over them. So issue 37 is coming, but the solicitations for 38 were kind of a slow trickling out. Who's the character on the cover? And is Captain Billy Captain Billy Morales? We didn't know the Morales name until recently because we're seeing the alt covers. There's a beautiful Jen Bartel variant. There's a design variant. And there's a 1 in 25 variant that features both Captain Billy, as well as Miles Morales on it for the first time. And she's also going by the name Spider Smasher. She does not have a great relationship with her brother in this alt reality. I like her design. It looks a lot like Iron Spider crossed with Ghost. You've got arms and kind of a mask thing. Really, really great. There is also a 1 in 50 scon spoiler variant that you need to be looking out for number 38. It's gorgeous. And in number 39, we find out that in her universe, Miles is evil. Ooh, so intriguing. Get this on your pull list. There's a reason why she doesn't get along with her brother and why they call her the Spider Smasher. Now at the list at number two, we're going to kick it to the person responsible for the spec. Good friend of the show, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, your friendly neighborhood bodybuilder, comic writer, Reggie Collects. Number two on the list is Battlestar Galactica, issue number one, published by Marvel Comics in 1979. This book has an average raw sales price of $15 and a high watermark sale for a CGC 9.8 at $260. The first three issues of this series are reprinted in standard size comic book format from the oversized Marvel Super Special issue number 8 published in 1978. Rumors regarding this IP have swirled around for years, going all the way back to 2011. Most recently, in October of 2020, we received another update that there was actually a movie in development from writer-producer Simon Kinberg from X-Men and also a TV show in the works from producer Dylan Clark of Planet of the Apes fame. Oftentimes, what happens with news of this sort is that when the news comes out, people get excited. They go out, they get the book. But over 
over time, that excitement starts to wane as people shift their attention to other things. And that is until someone creates a video that reminds them of how awesome the IP is and they start to do their research and they get excited all over again. That's essentially what just happened this week as there was a 420% increase in the volume of sales this week versus last week. This increase in interest can be seen across all different versions of Battlestar Galactica issue number one that can be found. If you happen to see these books out there, if you happen to pick them up, I just want to remind you to geek responsibly. Thanks for being on the show, Reggie. It's always a pleasure. Make sure to hit the link in the description, Comic Fam. Give one of my favorite comic collectible themed YouTube channels a follow. You won't be disappointed. And while you're down there, if you're looking for a way to support what we do, we're here every week for the Comic Fam. Give me an excuse to send you comics every single month. Link in the description or go to ComicTom101.com to join the April Mystery Mail Call. One per box. We're sending out Peach Momoko variants. We have teamed up with Boom Studios and Peach Momoko to bring you this incredible cover for Something is Killing the Children number 21. There are two different covers, and when you subscribe, you will get one of either in your box. And now at the list, the number one trending book in the world is because of another YouTuber. Another YouTuber you gotta be following, Jim Comics. We have Strange Academy. Issue number 16. $15 average sales for the first full appearance of Howie, a lycanthrope, also known as a werewolf. Now, we got to see his cameo back in issue number two, but knowing that at Strange Academy, these are the kids of superheroes and other characters in the universe. Is he related to Werewolf by Night? Had to pick up my little werewolf, Butch, but it would only make sense for that to be true, especially when you consider how many cameo appearances this character had over the story arc. It took till issue 16 to see his first full appearance, and issue 18 marks the end of the semester before they take a break and come back with another issue one. And there's only one variant being solicited, and it happens to be a character profile of Howie. 1100% increase in copies sold on this book. Keep in mind that issue number 16 also has a Ryan Stegman variant. It's another one of those character variants and it features Ava Quintero. So there are so many supernatural things happening in this strange academy. It's probably a great series that everyone needs to be getting on because I think these roads are leading somewhere. Considering there's not a whole lot of werewolves in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and with so much spec being allocated to Bronze Age keys, Werewolf by Night, for example, I see this as just another great opportunity to get in on the ground floor. Speaking of a werewolf by night keys. We want to remind the community about the upcoming Halloween special that's really caused all this supernatural hype. Like I know we had Blade getting us excited. Morbius leads us to believe that some type of team is forming. But the information that's coming out about this Halloween special is really where all the interest in the occult is being focused. So while we don't know if he's going to be related to Jack Russell or Jake Gomez, we do know that the solicitation for Strange Academy 18 is telling us that it will destroy us emotionally and the school. Clearly things will never be the same. Hit the like, slap the subscribe. You may notice I wore some rings today, some jewelry, which I don't typically do. They were gifts from Mad Cave Studios. They know I like Nottingham. They sent me a poster. They sent me a bunch of goodies and I wanted to wear them in gratitude. Thank you, Mad Cave. And thank you to the best community in the world. Thank you to Reggie Collects. Thank you to Jim Comics, Key Collector. And as always, geek responsibly. Enough said. Every single Wednesday, you can join myself, the Comic Sensei, and the rest of the What Not Wednesday squad for dollar start auctions that last as little as 15 seconds long. And at 5 p.m. this coming Wednesday, I am bringing a Marvel blue chip book, Journey into Mystery 85, the first appearance of Loki graded at a 2.0 to auction. We're going to do a dollar start auction and see where it lands. Come join us. Bookmark the sale. Link in the description. And take a look at these other videos. We made them for you. Have a great week.